Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 24, Using Public Wireless Networks. In the last lesson, we looked at a few examples of wireless security threats. With these threats in mind, I want to suggest some tips that will help you to use public wireless internet connections more securely. These tips are to refrain from using unsecure network connections for private business, to obscure your computer screen and keyboard, to know whether your connection is secure, to use websites that use HTTPS, and to use a virtual private network, also known as a VPN. Wireless security tip number one is to refrain from using public networks for private business. It can be difficult to tell whether a public Wi-Fi connection is legitimate. Sometimes users think they're connecting to a legitimate network, but they're really connecting to an evil twin router or a rogue router, either of which could allow a cyber criminal to sniff one's internet traffic. The simplest, most effective solution to this problem is to refrain from using public networks for private business. Save your private business, like banking, shopping, or anything that requires you to submit login credentials, for a time when you can connect to a secure private network. We recognize that this is not always the most convenient solution, but by limiting your activity on public networks, you significantly lower your chances of being attacked. Wireless security tip number two is to obscure your computer screen and your keyboard. Peeking over somebody's shoulder is a pretty low-tech cyber attack, but it can be an effective one. Cyber criminals will position themselves so that they can see a user's computer, and they'll watch the screen. Or they could watch the keyboard and observe private information like passwords or account numbers as they're typed. You might be surprised how proficient some people are at watching and reading your keystrokes. So when you use the internet in public, be aware of your surroundings. Position yourself so that it's difficult to see your device, and pay attention to people as they change seating around you. If possible, try to stake out a seat against a wall to prevent people from sitting behind you. Wireless security tip number three is to know whether your connection is secure. You should know whether you're using a secure or unsecure wireless network. Your operating system should tell you whether or not you're connecting to a secure wireless network. For example, the Windows 7 operating system will list your available wireless connections in a frame that looks like this. Unsecure wireless connections will display a small yellow warning icon. Secure connections will display no warning. And if you try to connect to them, they should require you to enter a security key. If the network is unsecure, you should probably avoid using it to do any private business. If the network is secure, then it's still possible for anybody else connected to the network to intercept your Wi-Fi signal, but that signal will be encrypted and therefore it will be more difficult to interpret. So figure out how your device indicates whether or not wireless connections are secure and always be aware of whether or not you're connecting to a secure network. Wireless security tip number four is to use websites that use HTTPS. When computers communicate with each other, they have to stick to a very strict set of communication rules. These sets of rules are called protocols. When your computer communicates with a web server over the internet, they use a protocol called HTTP, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP is designed to transmit web code back and forth between computers in clear, easily readable text. However, there's another version of HTTP called HTTPS, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. With HTTPS, all traffic between your computer and a web server is encrypted. This means that even if somebody intercepts the signal somewhere between your computer and the web server, it will be unreadable to them. Many websites use HTTPS for their login pages so that your login credentials are secure as they move across the internet. If you're going to submit sensitive information online, you should make sure that you're using a web page that uses HTTPS. Most browsers display the address bar differently for a web page that uses HTTP than it does for a web page that uses HTTPS. Here's what the difference looks like on Firefox. The page on top uses HTTP, and the page on bottom uses the more secure HTTPS. Notice the green padlock and security certificate on the HTTPS page. 
Here are the same two pages shown as they would display in Google Chrome. Again, HTTP is on top and HTTPS is on bottom. Notice once again the green security certificate and padlock icon on the HTTPS page. You should be aware that HTTPS helps to protect you from eavesdropping, but HTTPS can't protect you from malicious websites. Not every website that uses HTTPS is safe. It's just that using HTTPS will protect you from wireless eavesdropping. Wireless security tip number five is to use a virtual private network or VPN. Not everybody uses a VPN or even has access to one, but for people who do, a VPN is a strong privacy and security tool. Let's take a look at how VPNs work. Here, we have a computer on a wireless network that wants to connect to a web server through the internet. We'll use blue arrows here to indicate that, for whatever reason, none of the connections between these devices are encrypted. So, unencrypted traffic might start with the computer, travel to the wireless router, travel through the twists and turns of the internet, and end up at a web server. And then the web server might send a response back to the computer. None of this will necessarily be encrypted. But now let's imagine that this is happening on a VPN. A VPN creates an encrypted connection between your computer and some other private network. This private network might be a home network, or it could be something else like a corporate network that you use at work. A VPN lets you connect privately to this network even if you're on some other network somewhere else in the world. We'll use red arrows to indicate that the connections between these points are encrypted. All of your web traffic on a VPN gets relayed through the private network. So if the computer on the left wanted to communicate with the unsecure web server at the top of the screen, it would do so through the secure connection with the private network. So all of the internet traffic starting at the computer would be encrypted. This encrypted traffic would remain encrypted as it moved across the internet to the private network. Then the private network relays the traffic to wherever it's supposed to go. At this point, it may become unencrypted. The web server would send its response back to the private network. The private network would encrypt the response and send it back to the user on the left side of the screen. To use a VPN, you need special VPN software to create the encrypted connection between your wireless device and a trusted private network. Some people create VPNs using their own home networks. Others pay VPN services for access to large for-profit VPN networks. A few people use VPNs to connect to their workplace networks when they're out of the office. VPNs do a good job of protecting users from wireless sniffing. But remember that a VPN can't protect users from people looking over their shoulders. Neither will they protect you if you connect to a malicious website. However, if you simply must perform private business over a public Wi-Fi connection, then the safest way to do so is to use a VPN. Okay, let's review. We've covered five tips for safer browsing on public wireless networks. These five tips were to refrain from using public networks for private business, to obscure your computer screen and keyboard so people can't watch what you're doing, to know whether your connection is secure, to use websites that use HTTPS, and to use a virtual private network or VPN. In the next video, we will discuss some security topics for wireless network administrators, especially people who administer a home wireless network.